Good afternoon indeed. Um, so the question asked to me was how to improve the diagnosis of stage 3 colorectal cancer. Now that question can be answered in several different ways. Uh, but I've chosen to, to basically start with pathology and then evolve in the other aspects that are nowadays. As you know very well of pathology, this is what we see every day. We see here um, a cancer, um, you see the mucosa altered and you see invasive growth. And obviously our tasks as pathologists is to say based on this morphology to give a prediction to what happens to the patient and our prediction based on this image is that we have invasive growth therefore the chance on metastasis and therefore its patient might die of disease obviously we hope that our colleagues our the clinicians will prevent that from happening so the task of pathologists is, to, is, is in, in a way a bit sad so we make predictions all the time but we hope that our clinician, clinicians make our predictions become untrue now as you also know that the ones that cure patients the most are the surgeons and that's already for a long time so and all the classifications we made in pathology uh, as well as TNM are actually made based for surgeons and to have them make the moment clear when they need others than surgeons alone. That's basically what's underneath TNM. And obviously, in this time and age, there is much more to TNM, much more than TNM was designed for. So the reason why we would like to improve on stage three and actually also on stage two TNM stage um, is that we know that we are over-treating and under-treating patients both in stage two and both in stage three. And also we know that there are mixed populations of patients both in stage two and in stage three. We know that already for a long time because before there is TNM, there is also already classification. And already since the late 50s and early 60s, we know that adenocarcinoma of, co of, of, of the colon and the rectum is a mix of different diseases. However, for many, many years, we were, there was not a lot of interest to make these classifications usable because there was not a lot of interventions that were different between the different disease entities. But that has been changed recently and there is a renewed interest in classification of the disease. So that is classification of the disease and then there is the classification of the extent of the disease. I think though, and, and that's basically staging. So TNM is a staging system, not really a classification system, but before that we have classification. Now, of course, one of the key features here is prognosis. Patients want to know and clinicians want to know the prognosis before and after surgery. And there is a lot of important information that we already know. Histological type. We know that different histological type have different prognosis. Nevertheless, we rarely use that in practice. The same is for differentiation. We rarely use that in practice. Maybe in stage two when it's a poorly differentiated disease, but it was already shown in the late 50s that poorly differentiated adenocarcinomas have a way worse prognosis compared to well differentiated ones. Of course, the extent of the disease if a surgeon cannot take it out completely, we know that there is a problem, and therefore TNM was designed to give more precise information. More recently, we use additional features, features like angioinvasion, some protein expressions, the inflammatory response. We know already also since the 60s that that's a very, and, and the 70s that it's a very strong predictor of outcome. And we also know that the amount of stroma is a very strong predictor of outcome. All these is very old information that's being used now in a new fashion. What we do now actually is move from prognostic factors to predictive factors. And predictive factors, as you know, are very helpful because they really pinpoint to the type of therapy that a certain patient needs and that a is usable in a certain patient. We do that for efficacy, we do that for safety, and we do that for efficiency. So these are important markers. And that's 
this is what's behind it, the very well-known uh, five years, six years old cartoon that we still can use uh, in a teaching facility. We know it's completely wrong. Uh, we thought at that time that the genetic basis of the disease was, was very critical. We know now that it's way more complicated than this, but as a thinking frame, it's still helpful. We can still think about different aspects of a tumor that uh, are related to certain treatment options. Uh, but uh, the, the, the center part of this is very critical. We, the tumor is not only neoplastic cells, it's inflammation, it's trauma, and all these contribute. Um, so the thinking frame is very helpful for predictive markers. But that's only the superficial part of the problem. Now, the first priority, if we want to improve on TNM, is do it right and improve TMM itself. At the end of this year, we will have the new TNM, the TNM-8, and there has been a lot of discussions on the different topics, and especially also in colorectal cancer. And it looks like, although the, the final de uh, uh, decision has not been made, that probably in TNM-8, this uh, will be for colorectal cancer being used worldwide, which is not the case now because several countries have not adopted TNM-6 and 7 for colorectal cancer, as you know. So the improvement of definitions of TNM on the one hand is important. Secondly, if you have TNM, use it properly and do the interpretation properly. And we know that there are issues there, and I will show you some examples. As you know, in the fifth edition, this is a while ago, there was a very nice definition of what a lymph node metastasis was. This definition was based on size, which is easily measurable and which is reproducible. And this is the definition that is still being used. So TNM5 is still being used in the guidelines of the United Kingdom, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, and some other countries. Yet in Germany and the United States, we use another definition. So TNM stage in Germany is not the same as it is in the UK, and that's very unfortunate. Because in the sixth edition, there was a change. There was a change in definition that's being adopted, and now we don't have an objective measure anymore. We have a subjective ID on form. Uh, the form des decides what it what, whether or not we're talking about the metastasis. And just to illustrate that in a bit detail, the same patient uh, in TNM5 could have stage 1, 2, or 3 in TNM6. And in fact, because in the United Kingdom and the Netherlands, TNM5 is still being used, the patient who has TNM sta stage 1 may have the same patient with the same pathology, TNM stage 3 in Germany. Now, we hope that that, of course, will, ha will, ch will alter, and it seems that uh, it's going to be the case. And the reason is that the lymph node metastasis, where you can recognize the lymph node, as you see on the left side, that has never been a problem. But in the middle, this is what is in TNM 6 and 7, a lymph node metastasis, but it will be extramural venous invasion in TNM 8. So a whole different process, because that's not a lymph node metastasis, that is a tumor growing to a vein. But that was not recognized. And the tumor deposits have another meaning altogether. They are part of the T stage, not of the N stage. So bringing together the ideas on definitions on what is a lymph node will help us at least to have a TNM that's being used all over the place at the same time. And is this important? Yes, it is. It's quite a substantial number of patients uh, that, that change. It's a paper already from 2004, but it seems to be forgotten that uh, quite a substantial number, 10 to 15 percent of the patients, have a really change in state based on the definition you use. So if you look at uh, survival curves of the United Kingdom, you have different patients in stage 3 than when you look at survival curves of Germany. And I think that's, that's an important thing to realize, and that will already change substantially after this year. Uh, so UK, Belgium, Scandinavia, the Netherlands have a different approach to TNM staging than the other countries. Now this is the end 
part of it. Um, but there are other errors. There are others in staging when you look carefully how it's done. It seems so easy uh, the, if you look at the T stage and the N stage definitions. But looking at a review of 300 cases, the same cases were seen by a local data manager, a review pathologist, and a quality manager with a lot of knowledge of TNM. And as you can see, there are a substantial number of mistakes just being made based on interpretation of TNM. So teaching TNM, even after this year, is going to be quite important because the uh, number of errors happen. And if your staging is not correct, uh, then of course your survival curve will be dependent on that. So improving TNM staging starts with the proper TNM and the proper interpretation of TNM. I think that's the first thing to do. It's not very expensive. It, it, it takes knowing and teaching. Another item that has been around for a while is lymph node sampling. We know that there is understaging when you don't sample enough. Here you see 2009 and 2010, and the intervention in the Netherlands was taken, uh, so it's 10 lymph nodes or more. Uh, a large proportion of patients did not have that in 2009, and in 2010 it was much better, and the intervention was protocols automatic protocols by which you have to uh, show uh, where uh, what the number is. It's, again, a simple solution, not expensive, but very helpful in improving your T-staging. The other important topic is, of course, the discrepancy between clinical staging based on imaging and pathology staging. As you can see here, um, uh, there is even based on in patients without adjuvant therapy and rectal cancer, you see understaging and overstaging um, uh, as a, a clinical stage compared to pathology stage. Now, that's not so much as a problem when you t do your surgery, but when you do your new adjuvant therapy, of course, your clinical stage remains the important stage. And as you can see, a large majority of patients are wrongly states, especially T states, but also N states. So uh, this is an issue. We need better imaging. Uh, this is being developed, but that will also be a part of improving TNM staging. Maybe more important than improving TNM staging is the real recognition of the different diseases we are talking about. Now, when it's really a different cancer, like a lymphoma, there is not a real problem because it's already going into another uh, category and even to another clinician. But the knowledge that a metastasis in microsatellite in stable diseases is around for 20 years. Nevertheless, it's still uh, the case that these patients are staged the same and treated the same. Of course, there are now new drugs uh, that are being used, but that the prognosis, prognosis is so different uh, is not taken into account. So classification uh, of cancer into three very well known, this is a slide that's uh, quite old already uh, from the previous century, but it's still valid and it still gives us a lot of information that we tend not to use too much. Uh, we have different diseases. And as you also know, we have hereditary diseases which make up about 10% uh, of the cases with patients with colorectal cancer. And again, their prognosis is very different from the ones who have a cancer outside uh, the uh, hereditary situation. So diseases, recognizing diseases and treat them as a different disease, I think remains important, but it's a different, difficult message, I know. Next to disease entities, we have prognostic characterization. Uh, I don't know what's happening here. I'm missing a few slides. It's not important. I can explain it based on what we have here. Prognostic information uh, we probably are going to use more often based on the morphology, as I explained already, on the protein expression, and obviously on gene signatures. Uh, 
And like in breast cancer, gene signatures are important. They are equally uh, prognostic relevant compared to traditional pathology, but they seem to be uh, more reliable. There's less inter-observer variation, and you will hear a lot about that later on in this uh, talk. Obviously, we will increase uh, the uh, sensitivity of uh, metastatic disease by using liquid biopsy. Again, this will be a topic later on in this session. And um, uh, based on a, a continuous monitoring of patients and based on signatures, we will have a more precise delineation of different groups of patients. And finally, uh, the predictive markers, we are going to use them but only after we have decided that a patient does need therapy. And hopefully we ca can decrease the number of patients that are receiving systemic therapy that do not need them, and we will increase the number of patients that get the correct therapy. And I think based on these thoughts and this background, I hope you can integrate the next uh, talks into this way of improving TNM. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>